Hi, everybody. It's Ray. It's Life and Vibe. And I, I think I'm on video number, is it 25? I want to say it's 25. It could be 26. <laughs> Let's see. I started today at 23, 24. So this is 25. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I had to look at my notes. I think it's 25. I'm forgetting. Of day seven of the Sarasota Tem Challenge. <laughs> and uh, just to round up, I think I have one more video, but he could drop another one on me. Hoping not, but he could, he could. Um, but uh, we got morning chat. Yeah, it's taken me a while to catch up with this. He, of course, had to do three different videos. Just one with his cup of coffee in his hand. One of him walking to get the cup of coffee, which was out of, out of order. And now we get morning chat. <sighs> in a parking lot. <laughs> what can I say? Anyway, it's Tim. It's a parking lot. It's Laughlin. He's going to tell us all about what's going on through his mind. Okay. <sighs> Let me just get out my disclaimers and get this party started. All right. This is obviously fair use. You know, this is entertainment purposes only, as we know. And these are only my opinions. I am a registered nurse here in the United States, trained to be a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. I am not treating or diagnosing, Tim. I'm just giving my opinions, my thoughts, my commentary. There we go. I made that one nice and quick for everyone. <laughs> I'm getting faster. i got to throw out the disclaimer so Tim doesn't get litigious on me. All right, guys. Let me make me small. Make Tim. Tim big. There we go. More Timmy. All right, Tim. I have no idea what he's going to be talking about. He should be laying low today because a lot. Oh, my goodness, Tim. You have riled up card-carrying members of the NRA. <laughs> you managed to do it. It's not the group I'd want to mess with. Just letting you know. <laughs> That's the group I'd rather have on my side than against me. Anyway, Tim has managed to just irritate every responsible gun owner in the United States, pretty much. So, because there are people who are extremely responsible and understand that they don't want to lose their Second Amendment right by following very strictly gun regulations. And then there's people like Tim. <laughs> what can you say? Tim is the guy who would be fishing without a license. Oh, I actually heard he used somebody else's hunting license too. Ah, oh, Tim, you are just a character, aren't you? <laughs> a little bit of a cad, as we would say. All right, he sped up to 1.25 because. I can't do just 10 at normal speed. Coming to you from the Colorado River along the uh, river walk here this morning. I and uh, I brought you out here this morning to talk to you, have a little morning chat. I'm all mic'd up. I'm not trying to get too cheap on you. Mm -mm. I got a new shirt on. And uh, we haven't seen that pro golf shirt, Tim, that your friend got you. Florida, Florida 1948 or whoever it was. Well, oh, sorry. What what happened to your what happened to the golf shirt? The nice pro golf shirt. We want to see that again. If we don't see it, we're going to assume you returned it to the pro shop for money. So we need to see that shirt. The one that you got from the pro shop, please. Thank you, Tim. My eyes look like hell because I took a shower and everything tried to uh, knock off all the sleep off of me, but for some reason, I don't know if I sleep that well. Uh, and so I still look a little sleepy. And uh, the sun is coming out. That is Arizona right over there. I thought you said you had that killer bed in the in the uh, Flagstaff. You were showing us your bedroom the other day. Oh, was it? Were you having another late night with Jay? You have a lot on your mind. What's going on, Tim? Why aren't you sleeping well? Something's happening. I sleep like a log. There, I'm standing in Nevada. And I won't be here much longer. Uh, here's the update of what's going on. The time has come to an end here in wonderful uh, desert Arizona and the southern tip of Nevada. I will be leaving in the morning. My rent is due tomorrow, so I have to leave or pay. And I keep saying I'm going to go. And uh, different subscribers, Timmy, Apple Valley, and a few people uh, came to see me. And I, stuck, I stood around. There's a lot of gnats flying here. Uh, I guess I can walk down this way. And uh, 
these things are flying all around me here. Yes, they get are. out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Mm -mm. So, whew, gosh, what are they? Uh, They're probably smelling that coffee and that, that greasy McDonald's that you had this morning. <laughs> That's why they're surrounding you, Tim. They smell you. They smell the McMuffin on you. We'll walk down this way. There's the uh, Riverside Casino. But anyway, yeah, uh, Timmy came, wanted to play some golf, and <laughs> no, I had a great didn't. time with him. No, he uh, didn't want to play golf, Tim. Don't lie. The poor man was telling you his back was killing him. He probably just came for a visit to hang out at the casinos. You're the one who dragged this poor man around the golf courses. He did not want to play golf. Once he got out there and realized his back didn't feel good, he was okay for one day. And you 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 tortured him for a second. Did you ever do anything that Timmy wanted to do? Took the time to visit you? Probably wanting to have a nice time? Drag that poor man out through the golf course? Try to get him to mess up his teeth? Come on, Tim. Think about it. Hmm. I don't know. Others came to we see remember. me. remember. And then um, uh, my new good friends, uh, Jay and Bev, are here uh, from Florida. And we've been spending some time together. Him and I did some uh, events yesterday, you know. I went to a shooting range, outdoor shooting range, a free one. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of controversy about that outdoor range, Tim, because it seems like you guys were firing guns across the street. And I don't find that cool because I got accidentally hit by a some type of bullet or BB gun pellet or something hit my windshield twice when I was driving. I heard the pop pop and my windshield was not, I was driving. It was pretty, I was petrified. So I had holes in my car and glass shattered everywhere. And it just kind of didn't get to me. So it's just not cool. It's just not cool, Tim. It's not cool. And then um, uh, we went and had a couple of meals together. I think I wanted to do breakfast this morning, but I've got to get some stuff done. I've got to actually get my laundry done this morning so I can uh, prepare to leave. And I need to go to Walmart and buy some of that stuff was that he, goes inside the ark. What, was, he, was, was Jay wanting to get another <laughs> two for five dollar McMuffin meal deal with you this morning? <laughs> well, the McDonald's is right there. The, uh, to keep the uh, the tanks good and clean and, and smelling good. And I want to thank Jay. Uh, his, his birth name is John, but he does go by Jay. Uh, I want to thank Jay for um, helping me with that yesterday and solve that whole issue. Did you take him out to dinner for that? What? Oh, I know you got the breakfast sandwich, but after you were so bossy with him and controlling at the golf course and telling him what to do, and then he helped you fix the problem that you couldn't fix, you were masking it with pine saw. So you tried to come out here talking about being an RVer? Damn. You had to have somebody else take care of a problem for you. I think you've been operating this way your whole life. You have no, no skill sets except for the gift of the gab. That's all you have, mate, is the gift of the gab. And it's not, you know, over time when you, you can be gabbing, but if you're not gifting with an actual friendship, people are going to turn away from you. Issue. Uh, Miss T would have been, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't happy with it either. You come in the camper and there was a smell <laughs> and it was just the uh, vapor of stagnant water or whatever in the gray tank. And you have to just add a little. It's, it's about you not knowing how to take care of your business, Tim. That's what it's about. It's about you purchasing a very expensive item and not really understanding how to care for it. You spend all this time at the golf course, but you don't spend time fixing your business. And then you had somebody else do it. You were trying to mask that pine saw. It's probably one of the reasons why you were out all day trying to be on the golf course too, because of the smell. You should not be making videos about being an RVer when you don't even know how to care for your equipment. I hope next time, since Jay showed you, you will have the capacity to do it. Let's hope you learned. A little bit of this orange juice uh, when you dump those tanks uh, and the water 
is kept in there as you shower and wash dishes and things like that. So, hey, check it out. These guys are fishing on the uh, on the dock here. Uh, <clears throat> so I got that resolved, and I just today is kind of be a day. I wanted to play golf. I wanted to do a lot of things, but really, I have to start this morning early and prepare because when I yeah, I'm sure you just wanted to goof off and play golf, Tim. Because you, because, you know, that's kind of your M.O. Let's goof off. Let's play golf. Let me not deal with what's the smell in my RV. Let me not actually find if there are available RV parks. Let me just fly that one by the seat of my pants. Well, I'm glad you're actually taking the time to actually do adulting this morning. You know, and organizing your life. <laughs> That's the thing. Most of us, we do stuff throughout the day that isn't necessarily, you know, just having fun. I just have a feeling, Tim, you are just one of these people that you just want to be out having fun all the time. You don't want to take any responsibility. You don't want to, you know, oh, gosh. I would not want to share a house with you. Pull the slides in and put the camper on the back of the tundra. I'm going to need to, you know, have a lot of stuff already prepped and done. Uh, in the camper with like putting the, the dishes and all those things away that can topple over uh, for my 500 mile trip, 500 plus miles. I hope to do it in one day. Mm. And there's sprinklers over here. It's going to prevent me from. That is going to be a very long drive, 500 miles. <laughs> I know because I used to drive back and forth from Virginia to North Carolina. I don't think it was quite that many, probably maybe 300 some. I think it would take me five or six hours. So that's a pretty that's a pretty decent distance, Tim. Why don't you do something smart like find an RV park on the halfway point and decide to just stay for a night if you can or a rest stop somewhere and not, you know, be dangerous because you don't have great eyesight, supposedly. So is it wise to be driving that type of large vehicle and accessory with the RV? at nighttime with not the best eyesight? I don't know. Doesn't sound good to me. From it walking, like it feels fantastic out here right now. It's not hot at all. It's only supposed to get to, I don't know, 106 or something today, 103 maybe. And like I said, anything right at 100 degrees is totally fine in the desert. So I keep dancing around it. Uh, let me break the news to you. Uh, some of the uh, subscribers that email me and I talk to you regularly are already in the loop. It, it, wow, a lot of water coming on the sidewalk here. Reno, baby, Reno! <laughs> Why are you having so many close friendships with your subscribers? That's a very sort of strange thing to do, you know. It's just I feel like it crosses the line between where you are as a creator and your audience. And I think that's not necessarily you know, always, especially the way that you're kind of using them as your friends. I mean, this is, and it's the reason why people, which I'll show shortly, leave the types of comments they do in my comment section. You're really, you, you, your audience aren't very good Christians, Tim. Let's put it that way. That's right, man. No, I'm not going to Senior City. Um, I'm not going to Utah. Mm -mm. I set out to go to Utah. I guess that's Cedar City. I guess it's a retirement community and you're just trying to be funny, but nobody's laughing. Uh, when I left... I don't know. <laughs> you tell when me I then. left uh, Jacksonville, uh, the nice folks, Jeff and his wife, a Shelly, that I sold the cramper to, are selling that beautiful home that I made a video of in Jacksonville. And they're moving to Cedar City that I call senior city, yeah, oh. a 6,000 foot altitude, a beautiful place. And uh, I've been trying to get there and I was sure I was gonna go. And there was great, great golf courses, numerous golf courses, in fact, uh, around the St. George area. Somebody get a mausoleum on a golf course so we can bury Tim there. Thank you. <laughs> uh, just south of uh, senior city. <laughs> Look at this, I'm gonna step over this, oh. going right across the sidewalk. Oh, so I just go like this. Oh, I'm out of breath. I'm so out of breath. Oh, see, as we age, folks. No, I'm sorry. There was no, no. It's you, Tim, because you didn't follow up with your healthcare providers and you didn't take good care of yourself. 
And it seems like you did a lot of play and probably not a lot of care. So that's, you should start walking more. That would help your cardiovascular health. You need to have that, that persistent cough checked out though. That is not good. I've been hearing it for days. It's getting, getting to chronic if it goes more than three months or six months. Sorry. I mean, it's a slight grade, but it's a grade nonetheless. And I haven't been walking a lot. When Miss T comes, we're going to walk a lot. We used to walk three to five miles every day without fail. And I miss my walking. Whew. Was this when you were living with her and her husband? Because <laughs> I understand you were a roommate at some point. I guess that's when you broke up with your wife? I don't know. But I hear you guys were roommates. You really did the dirty to a guy who was opening up his home to you, didn't you, Tim? You're not a very good person at the end of the day. <laughs> wow. Can you imagine you invite this guy into your, into your home? And because uh, he lived with Dwayne and Tammy at some point as a roommate and then turn around and then start an affair with the guy's wife. <laughs> then you want to be out there with your Christian devotionals. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of us sane adults realize that uh, it's really not appropriate, Tim. I don't I, There's no way that you can dress it up to look any better. Really is not a way to dress it up to look any better. I miss her too. So anyway, um, Reno baby uh, decided to go there because I'm pretty sure that uh, Jay and Bev are coming as well. Um, staying at uh, casino RV places are very cool uh, compared to like your traditional campground. <laughs> Now they have RV resorts that are in other states that are not, um, you know, casinos and that kind of thing. And those those places are fine too. They have lots of amenities, swimming pools, movie stars, and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And because Tim is just, you know, he's part of the Hollywood elite. <laughs> he's a YouTuber and he's famous, so he should be only having the best of the best. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling the girls at Panera Bread the, today, though, that I did do a crushing for coffee that featured the Panera Bread because I, I obviously I have my Panera Sip Club. <laughs> they remember when I started my chair. <laughs> but they're the only ones I talk to about it. It's, I'm not like Tim going around telling everyone I'm a famous YouTuber. Here's my card. Maybe I should, hey? Yeah, uh, I wouldn't mind staying in one of those, to be honest with you, but I just haven't seen any. Morning. Morning. I just haven't, uh, I haven't come across my travels and I've enjoyed. And Macy didn't hit them with a business card saying, Hey, got to check my channel out. Sarah said to Tim, you must be local. You're walking dogs. Uh, what I'm doing here. Look at that. Maybe it's not as demographic. Colorado River. We're going to walk down. Here's the uh, Riverside Casino, yeah. the North Tower. Yeah. And we're going to go right down the, uh, the river walk here where that gentleman's coming from. Yeah. And continue walking this morning. I'm parked uh, way back behind me there. Great. So. We'll keep walking and talking. So I got to. Uh, oh, gosh. Couldn't you not just had breakfast with Jay this morning? <laughs> I mean, goodness. Oh, I, I, I guess there's four or five thousand people who, who, who tune in daily to find out what Tim's up to. And some of it might be hate watch, Tim. <laughs> hey, at least I'm giving you YouTube premium. <laughs> Doing some research. I forgot how it came about. About to about going there, but uh, good morning, sir. Uh, <clears throat> but um, I'm gonna stop by uh, and see Johnny Vegas on the way out tomorrow morning, and we're gonna uh, have a lunch or breakfast. Oh, obviously, lunch, lunch probably. Am I gonna finally get to see the infamous Johnny Vegas? <laughs> I know he may have appeared before. I've just, I always say that I used to watch him, then he just got under my skin a little bit. And then I just decided to check in one day, like, I want to know what Sarasota Tim's up to. <laughs> and I found out he had no pants on. And that's when I said, oh, he's as problematic as I thought he was. <laughs> and that's when I said, Tim, I got to react to this because that's not appropriate. And then I'll make my way on up. It's about 525 miles, uh, eight plus hours. So pulling the camper and stopping and all that. Mm. It's a, it's an all day drive. 
I mean, I might even if I don't get out of here till later. I think you should split it up into two. <laughs> Just be reasonable. Eight hours, 500 miles. It's a little bit more than eight hours, I think, sweetheart. Especially when you're pulling a truck in an RV. I don't know about that. Here, check this guy out. <laughs> uh, hopefully I can do a lot of prep work and I can get out of here in the morning at, a, at an early enough hour, but I will be hanging out with uh, Johnny Vegas for a little while to share a meal because I don't know when I'll see him again. And he is a, a dear friend of mine. We speak every day, multiple times a day. And uh, he appreciates everything about everything in life. He is a wonderful soul and he appreciates you, my community, our community, uh, that have uh, wished him well and uh, think positive about him and put out prayers for his health because the man wants to play golf again and he's trying to get through his rehabilitation with his shoulder and now he's got this back issue. Oh. And it's just really... I don't know if he's ever going to get to golf again <laughs> from that sounds. I'm sorry. <laughs> Having worked in healthcare, once you hear the back, the shoulder, everything, I had a lot of patients that wanted to be back on the golf course. I can promise you. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, to, 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 to do that actual physical action for the swing, it's, it's, it's hard on the back. It's just hard, Tim. It's hard. So don't make the man feel bad if he can't play. You can't play either, even if you're on a course. Um, a trial for him. And every day, um, he, he's also had some other uh, bigger health issues, and he walks two miles a day uh, to keep those health things in check. And uh, I've never been down this. Is that a cardiac issue? I'm not trying to get into this man's business, but usually that sounds like somebody's trying to keep their cardiac health help up. I worked as a cardiac rehab nurse. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> sounds like somebody's trying to take care of their heart. That's all I'm saying. You need to take care of yours too, Tim. Stop eating all that, that garbage meat. And, you uh, <clears throat> so this like we, I mean, in the respect that he eats ch cheap cowboy steaks. And so I, I mean, I don't eat meat, but he, at this age, he probably should be having less saturated fat, the bacon, all these carcinogenic type foods. I'm sorry to say it. I know you can all hate me for it. It's just one of those things. I had to warn my patients as a cardiac nurse. Just comes in the territory of heart health. <laughs> We've talked about before uh, with Jay and others and yourselves out there. Uh, people you've known and family and friends, health can change suddenly and your life changes. And what is life? Life is to live, uh, not to endure. Oh. And people take it for granted. They just think, oh, I got forever and nothing can happen to me. And No, that's what you thought, Tim. <laughs> Most people are conscientious that life is uh, not infinite, that there is a time when it does come to an end. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we try to make the most of it while we're here. Well, m many of us, not everybody, but those of us who get the opportunities to do that, which you had been given many opportunities in the United States, Tim. You were probably in the country at the time when you, suppose that 40 hour work week didn't have to be as much with as much technology. Maybe that's where you're not able to get a lot of work because you got probably limited computer skills. So, you know, and what skills did you have to offer the workforce? You are the door greeters. Oh, Tam, that's what you could do because you don't have any skills. Oh, you had the. You were in a generation that if you had just worked slightly harder, I mean, not even probably much more, you probably could have gotten a fairly reasonably priced house in Florida during that time. Florida was not super expensive for property. Not even Miami at some point. But now it's completely changed. So all the opportunities that you had to buy probably very inexpensive in comparison housing at the time, you lost it all. You just didn't want to do it. You wanted to probably play all day. You still want to play. Hmm. I got to get away from this music here. Yeah. But, um, mm -hmm. oh, boy, let me hurry up and get over here. I'll pause this. All right. We got through that little area there where they were pumping the music through the speakers. Mm -hmm. Good music, but doesn't work well with what I'm doing here. So now we're walking. Uh -huh. 
Tim must have lost a video on copyright once. <laughs> lost all his monetization. He probably had a it's probably one of his earlier ones. He probably had a lot of views on it. He's probably paid. You have to take that down. <laughs> or you just or you lose your monetization. <laughs> one of the, yeah, well, they actually you get in trouble. Take it, take it down. You have to take it down. <laughs> Towards the Aquarius Casino where they have a McDonald's. And I think they got the best cup of coffee I ever drank in my life in there. I'm going to head over there. Mm. There's a McDonald's over there, too. Uh, but we're going to walk over here to the uh, casino one of my last times. Maybe. My Do you just enjoy saying things wrong to irritate people? Are you one of those people that thinks it's funny just to say things wrong to irritate people? <laughs> because I'm sure people have said to you it's not mcdonald's it's mcdonald's and you're like mac, mac, mac. you know because you're tim and you you know even better than mcdonald's what their name should be it's, it's kind of it's very childish tim just say it as it's spelt Thank my you. last time in uh a casino in laughlin mm -hmm. yeah, here in uh this area i may not even step inside the uh casino here at the riverside now right there those big windows on the third floor that's where the car museum is. That it's free if you have a player's card club, a player's card, uh, which they all give you for free, or $3 or something like that. Very cheap. A super good uh, museum there to check out. Is this supposed to be a tour of the Laughlin parking lots? What is going on? We've already seen the river walk. You've already walked this parking lot a million times. Why are you still pointing things out? Just get your morning chat done, Tim. Out. There's a Riverside. <laughs> Makes me want to play sign. Monopoly Go over here. There's the RV park across the way. Oh, you no, see the A-frame house, there. maybe, uh, where the Ooh. showers and the... Uh, hey, you know what? That's where the laundry mat is. It's only two fifty. <laughs> I need to check in and just doing it right there. Maybe I'll use that. Let's head over to the McDonald's. I have a selfie stick, but it's to uh, film my, my walking videos with June Bug. We had to take it easy today because of the paw. The paw seems better now if anybody's wondering how her little paw is doing since uh, I don't know what was happening. She did something to her paw, back paw last night. You know, she wasn't wanting to jump up on the bed. I actually had to pick her up and put her up on the bed. She doesn't usually let me pick her up. So I was guessing she definitely was not feeling great. When she let me p actually pick her up and put her up on the bed. <laughs> but she's letting me pick her up more often now. She was not, she was very abused, I think. Uh, I adopted her from the, the animal control. All right, keep going, uh, Tim. So I don't know how I found uh, Reno. Oh. Back to Johnny. He really uh, has been a dear friend. And it kind of saddens me that uh, I'll even be that much further from him. And uh, as my... I mean, I just love the way he tells... Everybody's a dear friend, you know? D Jay's a dear friend. He met him like twice <laughs> so far, you know, and hung out. I mean, I have people that I've probably hung out more with than you've hung out with Jay, who I know, and probably known for a couple of years, and, you know, kind of friends through friends type things. But when I see them, I, I get on with them and stuff. And uh, I wouldn't call them a dear friend. <laughs> I mean, to be a dear friend, we're talking friendships of 20 years or more. So people who've been, who've got your back when you've needed them. I have a dear friend because he actually came and took me to my, I had no one to take me to surgery because I'm, I'm alone. And so fortunately, I have one friend and I knew that, he was not going to let me down. It, it, he was not going to let me down. And I needed someone early in the morning. And he did it for me. 5.15, I had to be at that surgical center. And he stayed. And he actually stayed, stayed with me until they took me into surgery, picked me up. Did things. That's a dear friend. Okay. Not somebody you just, you know, I just don't think, you know, you were supposed to be dear friends with Dwayne. And look what you did to him. So I really don't think you have an idea of friendship. I think it's all about how you can use people, Tim, in my perception. So you just call them dear because that's language that you know will manipulate people. You're quite the master manipulator in some ways with your good old boy charisma and charm.
but you're an operator, Tim, and it, and it does show more than you realize. That day on the golf course with Jay was just the antithesis of your type of mentality, really. Controlling, overbearing. Travels continue with Miss T and may end us up back in Florida, which is probably, you know, with her family and grandchildren, no doubt about it. Uh, but I'll continue to travel with the coach uh, several months a year. Oh, great. Just what her family probably don't want to see. You. <laughs> and bring other content. We're looking at the uh, area of the villages in the central part of Florida ah! where Jay and Bev live. Of course you're looking at the villages. Promise you, Tim, you wouldn't make it in the villages. They would suss you out real quick, sweetheart. You can't park your RV there from what I understand, too. I kept saying to people, oh, he's going to want to go to the villages. I listen to him. Oh, Tim, you're very transparent sometimes. <sighs> That's scary. That's scary you can be. Well, it's because you talk so much about everything. It's going to catch up with you. You understand, don't you? This is one of the reasons why it's tempting to want to think, oh, you know, let me share my pills of wisdoms of my life with people, you know, as far as, you know, just being a talking head like you're being, Tim, um, with no expertise. You're just, oh, sorry, got stuck on my thing here. Um, with no expertise. I'm sorry, just shift on my furniture. I apologize. I've got kind of a setup. This is not the best setup here. I keep trying to get time to set up my studio because I need to clear the room out. And I unfortunately got sick and really sick to the point I couldn't do. I mean, I was literally, for one week, I was like lying on a couch and I could barely move. It was wild. Um, it's gotten better over the time. Um, so my setup is terrible. Anyway, Tim, you're transparent. <laughs> I should apologize for the shifting. <sighs> mm, because you're going to have to travel because nobody really wants to see the Tim and Tammy show at the house. And <laughs> Really? Tim getting a house with Tammy? Ugh. Well, I guess it will be soap opera content. It'll be stories. There'll be stories for sure. I didn't know it, but there's 56 golf courses there and 100,000 homes. This is not a little subdivision. This is a huge a planned community. And they actually live just outside of it. And I forget the name of the community, but it's basically, you know, you tell somebody that's where you live because that's a general, general geographical area. There are a lot of boats and trailers Okay, so Jay doesn't actually live in the villages. He just lives on a, another community on the outskirts. I'm sure there's other little communities that have popped up around the villages. But the villages is a very specific community <laughs> that I will never be part of in Florida. I am not somebody that would ever be accepted into that type of community. I am far too much of an outsider in many ways. <laughs> I don't conform very well. So they would I would not be the type of person in the villages. I just I just, you know, I'm not I'm a mom. Come on. <laughs> I, I you know, and Tim making me feel old over here. Anyway, keep going, Tim. Here in the parking lot of Riverside. I want to show you this boat right here. This is a typical jet boat that was dime a dozen when I grew up in San Diego for a while when I was much younger. It's a surfboard with a NHRA engine on the back. <laughs> and it is a jet propulsion. This right here, friends, mm. is the original River Rat, Colorado River jet boat. Why do they have a jet? Because the Colorado River is very shallow and this will keep you from hitting the bottom and tearing off a prop. So this works just like a jet ski. The only thing is a jet ski motor is about this big and you see what you got here. And they generally have a foot pedal, which he does, right down in there for a gas pedal. Uh, they don't have the you know, typical throttle like traditional boats. And the steering wheel is over on the left. Most boats have them over on the right. And it's basically a surfboard with a V8 motor in it. <laughs> Look how flat it is. And this, this uh, jet propulsion, this Berkeley right here, this can move up and down. It pivots, this thing. And it shoots the, uh, this cap comes up. It can shoot a stream of water from here to the RV park. I'm serious, like a hundred yards. It's it's crazy uh, what they can do. So over here you- Okay, uh, I thought we were doing a morning chat about your trip out of town. So 
I mean, not that I'm not fascinated by the explanation of about that particular uh, vessel. I just didn't think that's where we were headed to. Why are we in a parking lot now looking at boats? I'm so confused by this content. Keep going, Tim. We've got uh, some jet skis, which is what most people are using these days here on the are river. Are we in a boat show? And then this is also not a traditional pontoon boat with the outboard motor on it. Look what it has. It's a sea dew. This is a jet boat. This is a jet ski pontoon boat. See? Jet engines on the back, no propellers. Those are, they suck water in um, and then they shoot it out. And those little plates right there are, they go up and down to trim the front end out. This is a very nice, look, it even has handlebars like a, uh, like a jet ski. Look at the steering wheel right there. Isn't that cool? One boat I did want to always go on, or craft, I should say, was a hovercraft. And they used to have the hovercrafts that would travel between Portsmouth to uh, Calais. <laughs> I think it was a Calais. I think it was, was that our one? I think it was Calais. Yeah. Was it Calais? Oh, I think it was. Oh, goodness. Correct me if I'm wrong, Brits. I'm trying to get back to my memories. I believe it was Portsmouth to Calais. Or was, yeah, I think so. Ah, anyway. Gosh, I now don't know my geography of France. I'm sorry, any French people. I don't think anybody watches me from France. <laughs> anyway, I really wanted to, 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 to I've never been on one. And they used to go, I don't know if they still have them anymore, but they used to, you'd be able to get the hovercraft. We never, you know, I, I, we used to always take the ferry with the schools. The only time I ever went to France was with my schools or with other people on the ferry. And look at the colors of it. These are all designed for the shallow Colorado River, as well as people with RVs, uh, here in uh, Southern California and Southern Arizona and the like, their RVs, the most popular RVs here are what they call toy haulers. And what that is, the very back of the RV is a garage door that opens up and lays down and you can drive in and out of it with your uh, sand rail, your razor, your uh, dirt bikes or whatever. It's, a, it's that way you don't have to tow two things and you can, um, uh, you know, have all your toys. Let me turn the camera off. I'll explain to you a little bit better. Uh, this way I can point better at what I'm trying to show you. Here's another boat that has jet propulsion. Uh, see, no propellers. And it's a uh, just a typical looking boat that you would see in Florida or anywhere, lakes. Okay. But it yeah. has no propellers. It's designed. And there's Okay, an okay. <laughs> Why are we suddenly, I mean, are you trying to show your expertise in boats now? I live at the oceanfront Virginia Beach. I see boats all the time. My friends have boats and sailboats and all sorts of stuff my dad was in the navy why are you doing me with boats tim another one <laughs> whiskey and water it's a go fast boat instead of the engine being exposed uh like a lot of them are uh, like the one i showed you a moment ago this one has the motor uh inside this cover that you can lay on sit on it has some seats again the steering wheel mm -hmm. over on the left hand side Tim would love this is a bow all rider, these. so it has this open area here for more pass. Tim, the minimalist, would love all of these toys. <laughs> He's not a minimalist. <laughs> He's a minimalist of working, <laughs> except when it comes to turning out videos. <laughs> so it's not the surfboard style, but it is a jet boat. And here we go, another one, very sleek, with the open bow as well, and the engine covered. But this has an I.O., an inboard outboard. This outdrive is goes down electrically, and the propeller. I'm trying to just sit and, and, and listen and learn, I guess. I don't know. I'm a good student. <laughs> so <gasps> I'm like, okay, we're going to talk about boats. Let's talk about boats, and I'll listen. But I don't know why we suddenly went from talking about Miss Tammy and the villages, and now I'm suddenly looking at a sea do. You know, but it's Tim. <laughs> just the way his content goes. <gasps> well, he's like a squirrel. He's like, oh, that's attracted my attention. Let me head that way. So whatever he was talking about, <laughs> he, we, he left that conversation. He's over here now talking about boats and, and craft for rivers, river crafts. We'll have to have deeper water than that boat over there 
uh, because it has the, um, the outdrive there. And you have to be just be very careful about where you go because um, you could tear the prop off. If you're, you know, in the lakes and stuff, it's not a problem, but this one uh, has a, here's another sea dew uh, pontoon boat, just like the other one. Has this beautiful uh, bimini top. And look at the hinging and the metal work, the, the, uh, the workmanship of these. These aren't these little round aluminum poles of a bimini top. Did you ask any of these owners before you just started like filming their property? <laughs> I mean, if it were a boat show and they were out on exhibition, I could understand. But I don't know if you could just go around and start talking about people's property like this. <laughs> there is somebody else's property, Tim. It's not a public building, okay? Just because they're in a... I mean, I don't know what the law on it, but I just think it's bad manners. This is a very nice he can top can't. that when you put it up, I mean, you're completely sheltered and it's it's high quality. This is not a cheap boat. It's 23 foot. Oh. Uh, well, no, it's 230 horsepower, it says. Uh, uh, generally, those numbers represent how long they are, too. It appears to be about 23 feet. Jet boat. Uh. Jet boat. This is a actual jet ski boat. These have been around for years. They're kind of fun. Instead of you're sitting on a jet ski, it's a jet ski little boat. And that I'm sure you had a friend who owned one. <laughs> this is how Tim has gotten into anything he's ever done. It's because somebody else owned it. <laughs> I know that feeling though, Tim. But that's not uncommon, probably from a female perspective, since I don't tend to own these types of toys. Not really. You hear very few women who say, I just want to get a boat. <laughs> I mean, I know there's ones out there for sailing. Okay. So I know for sailing, that might be a little bit different, but uh, <laughs> not just like speed boats. Like, I mean, I did have girlfriends here actually in Virginia Beach who wanted a boat, but uh, you just rarely hear it as much, probably. But they don't handle it. up there. So I shouldn't is be for a ski rope. This one is I shouldn't, to... I shouldn't be sexist. Sorry, Tim. I need to finish my comment here. So you're gonna have to wait. I shouldn't be sexist. I have had female friends who want boats, but I just having been uh, just and even one that grew up on the water, I still have no interest in having a boat. I understand I had parents who had a sailboat. And just them talking about it and telling me about it and just the constant chat about the dang sailboat. I hated that sailboat. Full inner tubes and skiers and stuff like that. Uh, here's another big one there. Boy, they're really out this weekend, aren't they? And here's another sea uh boat. Now, this is cool. Let's take a look at this one a little bit closer. It's got these big speakers. That's what those big bullet looking things are. The knob on the top looks like a trailer hitch is actually the ski rope holder. And the big mirror he has is to view if the skier or inner two person falls off. This is Bombardier uh, made by sea -Doo. And look, it has the rear seat facing this way. I mean, you're showing this is the, the spotter that watches the skier that here. tells the driver uh, they fell. But look at the speakers they've got. And the speakers here are designed to blast so the skier or the inner tuber can, adhere, can hear music too. I mean, it's really a little party animal. And um, this from, uh, they're from California. There's a little deck here to jump off the back. I can stand on it. It's very stable in the water. And look, it's the same three passenger that you can sit on a jet ski, those long ones, four passenger, one, two, three, four. And you would leave one empty or even two uh, if they're on the tube or two skiers or one skier, and then you get the spotter here. So it's really, uh, that's what they do with this. And uh, lastly, I'll just show you one more thing here, uh, only because we're talking about jet skis. <laughs> And I see a lot of these. Well, you started talking about the jet skis. We aren't talking about jet skis. You are, Tim. <laughs> uh, this is more sea dews. These are newer, uh, the Rotax motor. And what you see here in the area is people pulling minimum of two, even four. So they have the whole family. Now, here's one there. He's a single or she's a single person. And if they have somebody with them, then they're like, all right, let's ride together, which is no doubt what they do. And they switch uh, turns driving it or someone will pull the other one on a tube or one will wait at the beach and the other one just switches off. But when you get two like this or even four, then, you know, you've got a whole family that doesn't want to share. 
They want their own. And so uh, can you imagine going into the jet ski store and saying, yeah, I need four of them. <laughs> I mean, those things are about, I don't know, got to be 20 grand a piece, 15 grand anyway. These, this mm. Yamaha, that's nice, isn't it? Look at that thing. This is sweet. I don't know. We get jet skis always in Virginia Beach. <laughs> There's a whole thing with jet skis, obviously. I live in an oceanfront town, Tim. Oh, my goodness. Another minute of boats? All right, keep going. And these things can do like 60, 70 miles an hour. There's a Kawasaki. All right, so enough of boats. You see there's one on the outside of the fence. It's got a propeller on it. It's like got triple axles. It's a river craft. Oh, that orange one over there. I'd have to see that when I walk by. What is going on? Is this a show? This might be a show over here. It's all in the fenced-in area. I think it is. Or it's just an area they park them. But look, oh my goodness, look. What is going to be going on here? Man alive. Something's getting ready to bust loose here in Laughlin. You know, summer's... Maybe he, people are here trying to sell stuff. <laughs> Who knows? <gasps> Maybe they're trying to sell them all to you, Tim. Kicking off. It is uh, June. And I'm going to end this video and make another one because I don't want it to be too long to upload. And then we're going to talk some more about uh, leaving here and going to Reno, baby. Reno, baby, crush it. Mm, okay, let's not. <laughs> All right, guys. I was going to quickly show you this one comment I got. And I just, because Tim was trying to tell people the other day that they needed to make sure to hit the three dots and not get into reaction channels and you know, it's just, we say such terrible things. And so I just wanted to share this good, um, uh, wonderful, and I pinned it just so I could find it. <laughs> I'm going to, and I, I usually, I love to pin these people because I, and because I don't delete my hate, Tim, or my trolls. I make them the stores of my comment section. <laughs> and, uh, Gary Gallagher, Gallagher, sorry. God, I was timming it there. Gary Gallagher, 4643, wanted me to know, you need to shut up. Live your own life and leave Tim alone. Why do you have to be so judgmental about somebody you don't know? I'm not being judgmental. I'm giving my commentary. So maybe I am being judgmental. Who knows? I don't know. And why do I do it? Because I think that Tim is problematic. Let's see what some of our replies said in here. <laughs> Thomas <laughs> said, because it triggers you, which I thought was a pretty good response. Bertie, the explorer, came in for me and said, you just hop all over the place, Gary. A lot more to keep up with. <laughs> If Timmy's buddy had not messed GB up, it would be easier. Keep clicking, please. <laughs> Ms. Vicky says, poor Gary or whoever you are. If you're not Tim, I hope Tim at least buys you a coffee every now and then. I said, uh, you can join Tim's Coffee Club at McDonald's. I appreciate the mature engagement with my channel. This helps me out. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I also said, Gary Gallagher, you are lost. Scurry on back to your hero, Tim, before someone reports you. Then you will not be able to enable him because he will block you for associating with the evil haters. He's on to you, Gary. He's on to you. Gary's a regular who's really drank too much of the Kool-Aid. Just go back to your leader's place and give him your money, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and all of these people are getting love. Anyway. I just wanted to share that because, you know, Gary's in there. Sorry, I got half of me there. Uh, Gary's in there. <laughs> oh, and I get great comments. Do something about your hair, woman. <laughs> your accent. Somebody told me to do something about my accent. What in the world is wrong with people? <sighs> Obviously, I give opinions about Tim because I think he's problematic on the internet. So there you go. That's why. All right, guys. I think I have just one more to do for today. I think that's it. I'm going to try to get this out done fast. All right, guys. Thank you for uh, continuing to watch. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, I certainly do appreciate it. It helps me get up the algorithm. And we get Tim falling further, further down.
If you go to take a look, you'll see that Tim is is not at the top of his search anymore. <laughs> and that's what reaction channels do. We we flood with their name so that these people can no longer be at the top of the search. Thank you all my supporters for all your support. You know what you do in order to help me maintain this channel is very much appreciated. And I want to thank you all for doing that. So thank you guys. Appreciate it. All right. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.